Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician, and on this video, I'd like for us to talk about the area model and how we can use that to help us solve some probability examples. Now, the area model has a lot of similarities with the generic rectangle that you might learn from Algebra 1 when you're helping to solve quadratic equations. Now, we won't be dealing with any quadratic equations in these examples, but that same idea of a generic rectangle is definitely something we're going to use as we solve these problems with probability. So in order to get started with an example, we really need to set up a situation that's gonna help us derive some probability examples. So I'm gonna go ahead and post this here for you to see. And this is a quick example I wrote up so that we can talk about probability using an area model. In this example here, I'm talking about my classroom, and in my classroom, one-fourth of the students are left-handed, and three-fourths are right-handed. Also, one-third have blonde hair, one-sixth have brown hair, and one-half have black hair. Now, let's say for this problem here, I wanted to figure out what's the probability that you are right-handed and you have blonde hair. Now that is a question we definitely wanna figure out, but as it stands, it's kind of a little complicated to figure that out. So that's where the area model is a great way to help us solve this problem. It's a nice way of organizing all of the data that we need to know so that we can quickly answer this question and any other questions that might come up. So let me go ahead I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we can get started on this and we can create an area model and start to solve it. So an area model is like a generic rectangle. We're gonna start off with that blank rectangle and now we need to fill in the, the events that are happening in this problem. Now there are two events occurring here. One of them is what hand do you write with? Are you left or right-handed? The other event is, what color is your hair? And those two things we're gonna need to show on this generic rectangle to help us solve that out. Now I would say, let's go ahead and start with the which hand do you use question, because that'll be an easy way for us to start this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and label this left side here as hand. Like which hand are you using? Now I could label the top as hand, doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna place that on the left side for now. Now, four, which hand do you write with? There's only two options, right? You either have a left hand or a right-handed person. And so those are our two possible outcomes. Those are the sample space for that question. So on here on this side, I'm gonna write out a big L and a big R, representing being left-handed and being right-handed. Now, the chance of you being left-handed is one out of four. So one fourth chance of my students being left-handed. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that one fourth right next to that L to recognize that being left-handed for my students is one fourth of that population. Same thing with being right-handed. Three quarters of my students are right-handed. So right next to the R, I'm going to write three quarters. And then I'm gonna split this rectangle right down the middle to show those two variants. Now it's so important that you be sure to write that fraction alongside that letter, because if not, if we didn't have the one fourth and the three fourths, it might appear that it's like a 50-50 split of being left-handed or right-handed, right? If you just had that line going across, it looks like it's split evenly, but we know that's not the case. We know left-handed people are only one quarter of my class. So that's why we wanna make sure we write one-fourth and three-fourths there. So that covers our first event. What hand do you use to write with? Now we gotta go on with the second event. And the second event is covered with that second sentence where we're talking about hair color. So I'm gonna go ahead and write here up on the top, hair color. And now we can start to identify what are the different um, outcomes for the hair color in my classroom. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more so we can clearly read what's going on there. 
So, hair color had three different options. You were either blonde, brown, or black. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, and because all of these letters tend to start with the same letter, they all start with Bs here. So what I can't do is I can't just write uh, a B for blonde, a B for brown, and a B for black. That's not really gonna help us here. For this example here, I'm actually gonna need to write out some of these words. So I'm gonna go ahead and write out that this is our blonde category. This is our brown category. I'll just write BR for that. That makes sense for that one. And I will write that this is our black for hair color category. Alrighty, that means we're going to have three separate entries here on this area model representing the three different hair colors you could have. Now again, as it stands here, right, it looks like blonde, brown, and black all have an equal chance of occurring. But we know that's not the case. We know that having blonde hair is a one in three chance. We know that having brown hair is a one in six chance. And we know that having black hair is a one in two chance. So that's why we gotta be sure, again, to write those fractions there so that we're aware of those probabilities. Now that we have this all set up, the last thing we have to do is we just need to start to fill in all of these um, empty boxes in our area model. Just like a generic rectangle, to do that, I look at the sides that make up the sides for that empty box. So right here I see this box represents you having blonde hair and being left-handed. And to find out what's the probability that you are blonde and you're left-handed, I need to take those two fractions and we need to just multiply them. Remember, when you multiply fractions, I'll do it off on the side over here. All you're doing, if I have the one-third multiplying the one-fourth, when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. So that's all we have to do. One times one would give us a one, three times four would give us a 12 in the denominator. I know that this box here represents 1 12th of my student population. Let's continue to do that for the rest of the empty boxes. This box here represents having brown hair and being left-handed. Well, 1 6 times 1 4th, that makes 1 over 24. This box represents having black hair and being left-handed. Well, 1 half times 1 4th, that represents 1 8th. Down here, we have three quarters of the people are right-handed. We have blondes making up one third of the population. So one third times three quarters ends up as three over 12. Now we could reduce that if we wanted to, but for right now, I'm gonna hold off on reducing until the very end to see if it helps with the math. This box represents having brown hair and being right-handed, one sixth times three fourths that ends up as three over 24. Finally, our last box here represents having black hair and being right-handed. That represents three over eight, three eighths of the population. So we have our area model fully filled out. Now we can go back to that original question, which said, what's the, what's the probability of having uh, or being right-handed and having blonde hair, we look at our area model and we start to figure that out. Being right-handed, that's talking about this bottom row. Blonde hair is this first column. So the people who are right-handed and have blonde hair, the probability of that occurring is three over 12. That's how easy it is now to answer this question because we know by looking at that area model quickly what that probability is. Let's go ahead and do another example too. What's the probability of having brown hair and being left-handed? So we're looking for on that box, where are you going to see left-handed people and having brown hair? So we look through and I see there's my left-handed row this column represents having brown hair. 
I now can see that the probability of a student of mine having brown hair and being left-handed, that is one over 24. Let's do another example. Let's say, what is the probability of having, uh, let's see, how do I wanna word this out? Of having or being right-handed and having either brown hair or having black hair. We want to figure out what's the chance of you have or being right-handed and having brown or black hair. So we're actually going to need to focus on two different areas for this. We want to first find out what's the probability of having of being right-handed and having brown hair. I see there's my right-handed, there's my brown hair. I'm looking there. That probability is 3 over 24. Finally, I need to now find what's the probability of have being right-handed and having black hair. I think that's represented with this fraction there, 3 eighths. So right next to 3 over 24, we're going to need to add 3 eighths as well. If you come across a problem with area model where it's having you use two different boxes, all you need to do is take those two fractions and add them together. So we have 3 over 24 plus 3 over 8. Hopefully you remember about adding fractions is that we can't add fractions unless they have the same denominator. I see this is a 24. This denominator is an 8. As it stands, we cannot combine those two. But I think I can leave this as 3 over 24. And I think I can change this second fraction to also have a 24 as the denominator. In order to do that, I would have to take this second fraction. There's an eight on the bottom here. I could multiply that by three, because eight times three gives you 24. So if I multiply the bottom by three, I would also need to multiply the top by three as well. So that three times three ends up being a nine. Remember, nine over 24, reduces to 3 over 8. They're the same fraction, one's just reduced. But now I have a fraction here where both of the denominators are 24, so I now can combine them by just adding those numerators on the top of my fraction. So 3 plus 9, that makes 12, so we end up with 12 over 24, but that just reduces to 1 half. So that means the probability of being a student in my class and being right-handed and having black or brown hair is a one-half chance. Half the students in my class are right-handed with black or brown hair. That's how we use area model. Area model is a nice way to help us set up, organize our data so that we're able to quickly answer these questions. It's that math magician, and I'll see you on the next video.